Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and as an INFJ I have honestly a lot of experience with being stuck in a loop. Yeah, I've spent more than a few years stuck in a loop. Yeah, I have a bad habit of hyper focusing on certain things, things that often don't really end up mattering that much. Now I want to talk to you about what the 16 personalities look like when they get stuck, what they get stuck on and what they can do to break free. So. The idea in the MBTI community is that we have a tertiary function known as the child. And this child function uh, is uh, often the focus of most people. Most people will tend to retreat into an infantile state of uh, childlessness, <laughs> you could say. That means, yeah, we sometimes struggle to take responsibility. We sometimes struggle to face problems and issues in our lives. We tend to make excuses. We tend to make things complicated. We tend to avoid things. And that's why we loop. We loop because we are insecure about something. We feel we are incapable of something. We feel afraid of something. There are emotions that we don't want to face. There are realities that we don't want to put ourselves in. Now the loop starts very simple. It starts with having a vision, having an idea, having a purpose, having something you know that you want to do. And then realizing that doing this thing is kind of hard. Actually, it's kind of difficult. Actually, if, when you think about it, it's impossible. Yeah, it's too difficult. It takes too long time. It requires you to go into uncomfortable situations. It requires you to do things that you don't really like doing or that you don't feel that you are capable of doing. So maybe you should just wait for a little bit. You know, maybe think about it, analyze it, reflect on it, work on yourself, you know, do other things. Because maybe if you do other things, eventually you'll develop the skills and the capacity to later on face these problems. Or better yet, maybe if you don't do anything, the problem will go away on its own. So all of the 16 personalities get stuck in loops and this is what the loops look like. First, the INFJ ISFJ loop. When INFJs and ISFJs get stuck in our loop, we get stuck in critical thinking. Yeah, that, that's what happens. We go into what is called introverted thinking. We become hyper analytical. We become focused on everything that's wrong, everything that we don't know, everything that we can't explain. We feel that we need to have an answer for everything. We need to be good at everything. We need to be capable of anything. And if we're not capable of everything, then we're not good enough. And then, yeah, we can't share or do anything with what we know. So while INFJs and ISFJs tend to make great mentors and teachers and support figures, a lot of INFJs don't dare to take this role, don't dare to become teachers, don't dare to become mentors, don't dare to become support figures because we feel we are broken people. We are not good enough. We're not capable. We don't know all the answers. We can't solve people's problems. Now, how do we get out of this loop? Well, INFJs and ISFJs get out of this loop when they realize that people don't need you to be the Buddha. People don't need you to be Jesus. People don't need you to be God. People don't need you to have all the answers, but they need you to help ask them the right questions. They need you to help them start thinking. They need you to help guide them so that they can learn and figure out the answers together with you. So people don't come to my channel because I have all the answers, but they come to me because I ask questions that get them thinking, that get them to figure out problems, that help them understand the world. And that's the goal for any INFJ. Actually, did you know that some people are even avoiding subscribing to my channel? Yeah, it's true. Some people are a bit afraid, a bit uncertain. Should I subscribe to Eric Dor? Am I really ready to make a change in my life? Should I not just keep playing Minecraft? Should I not just uh, stay where I am today? And I, 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 I've been, I kind of feel like what he says is important, but at the same time, I'm like, maybe I should do something easy and less uh, uncomfortable and less scary. But did you know that 100% of these people will eventually change their minds? Yeah, most people are eventually going to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, if they end up not needing it anymore, if they feel like they're good, they can always unsubscribe later. Now, what are the five signs that you are in a loop? First of all, 
You're in a loop if you are avoiding something that you know that you want to do. Now, this is important. You know that you want to do it. You know that it's the right thing. You know that it's important, but it's, you're not sure. You're not sure if you're going to be able to do it. You're not sure uh, it's worth the cost. You're not sure if it's worth the risk. You're in a loop because you're avoiding something that you want to do. That's step number one, sign number one. Sign number two is you feel insecure and we all feel insecure sometimes. You doubt yourself. You're not sure who you are. You're not sure what it is you want to do. You're not sure uh, if you're capable of doing it. You know, like you can feel a pull to something, but you can't explain why. So you feel like you first need to be able to explain why. Sign number three is you're stalling for time. Yeah, you're pressing the snooze button. You're like, you know the alarm is rising, you know it's important, you know it matters, but you're pressing snooze. Just nine more minutes in peaceful abyss. Just nine more minutes of avoiding it. Just nine more minutes of waiting. You know, you're doing that to a lot of things in your life. <laughs> and you're doing it to important things. Sign number four. You're waiting for somebody to rescue you. You're waiting, hoping that somebody is going to show up and fix it for you. You're waiting for somebody to give you permission to do it. You're waiting for somebody to come and give you money and give you time and give you attention and give you support so that you can do it. You're going to hope that somebody is going to help you fix your problem. But turns out nobody is going to come help you fix your problem. People are going to wait for you to go first. People are waiting to help you and they're only going to help you when you really need it the most. They're only going to help you after you made a decision. They're only going to help and support you after you've jumped in it. They're waiting for you to make the first move and the support is not going to come until you made your first move. Sign number five. You're hoping that the problem is going to go away on its own. Yeah, you're hoping that if you don't do something, it's gonna disappear okay so whatever it is that's holding you back whatever issue it is that's keeping you from chasing your dream it's gonna go away on its own eventually if i just wait long enough maybe maybe it won't be a problem anymore maybe something will change in the world or in my life that will make it better but what if it doesn't and how long are you gonna wait how does it feel to wait how does it feel to be in limbo how does it feel to be stuck Think about that feeling. Now, the 16 personalities went stuck in a loop. What is the INFP slash INTP loop? Well, INTPs and INFPs tend to obsess about introverted sensing. That means often they get stuck in a state of really victimhood. There is a feeling for INFPs and INTPs that they are stuck. They're held back. They live in a society with rules and norms and practices and traditions. And they can't really go against these things. They can't break out. They can't break free. They can't chase these new opportunities or explore this new world or try new things because they're tied down by the rules around them. There are so many responsibilities and duties that they have to fulfill that they feel they are barely capable of filling in the first place. And they can only allow themselves to go into and be creative and to explore their ideas after they finish their duties. They have to first take care of their responsibilities to the world before they can go out and fulfill their duty to the world as creators and artists. INTPs and INFPs break out of this loop when they realize that their first and foremost duty isn't to be responsible law-abiding citizens but rather to be creative to ask questions and to move society forward your goal is to be an innovator an artist your goal is to be an intuitive and to be a person that creates new movements and that brings up new ideas and new potential your goal is not to be a traditionalist What's the ENFP slash ENTP loop? This is the loop where 
you often find yourself keeping yourself busy yeah there's so much work to do there is so many things to do there are so many things on your to-do list that you don't have the time for anything you don't have the time for yourself you don't have the time to do things that you really love because you have to take care of these problems or challenges that are ahead of you yeah enfps and entps tend to create in sorry esfps and enfps tend to create these impossible challenges yeah they build up like this big project that they have to do that they have to spend so much time and energy on but the question is why are they obsessing about it in the first place enfps and esfps they break out of the loop when they realize they don't have to be successful they don't have to succeed at everything they do they don't have to be amazing or impressive or uh, rich or accomplished they don't need to be these things first and foremost enfps and esfps should seek to be human to have the right values to be authentic to be real to be good people to set a positive example yeah your the most important thing that you can do as an enfp or an esfp is to be a positive role model to show character and integrity to inspire other people to be their best version of themselves and that's where enfps and esfps prevail you make people become the best version of themselves the entp slash estp loop is simple it's an obsessive focus on what other people think about you yeah lots of entps and estps are worried about approval they're charismatic people they try to convince others they want to get other people to back them they want to get other people to like them the problem is usually entps and estps don't really like most people in the first place so why are you trying to impress people you don't care about that's my question for you why are you trying to amuse or entertain or <laughs> impress or get the approval of people that you don't even like to begin with ENTPs and ESTPs that break out of the loop become true innovators, boldly exploring new ideas, putting new things out into the world, being true examples of skill and impressive ability. ENTPs and ESTPs have the capacity to be incredibly talented and inspiring individuals as long as they stop seeking approval because yeah, let your abilities speak for themselves show people that you are capable and show people that you have power and that you are incredible at something and uh, let your actions speak for themselves the isfp slash istp loop what isfps and istps get stuck on is the unknown yeah they worry they go through what ifs they think about and reflect on everything they can't know what if something happens tomorrow? How can you know that something is good? How can you know that one decision is better than the other? Yeah, what, INFPs and I, what ISFPs and ISTPs do is they obsess about these what ifs. They speculate on the unknown and they find it hard to deal with the fact that there is an unknown to begin with. There is a future that they cannot predict. There are things in the world that they can't answer. So how can they make decisions? What can they do? Well, the first thing they need to learn is the most important they can do, thing they can do is live in the moment. Pre focus on what you have right in front of you. Yeah, you can't answer every question. You can't explain what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't know for sure what's going to happen with the decisions you make today. But your great skill is making the best of every situation. That means you have the power to transform every day to make every day a little bit brighter a little bit better to fix problems that are right in front of people to deal with and attend to things that we all need to do that need to be done and by doing this by creating the right choices in the moment trust that you are creating a good future trust that you are making and moving society forward trust that you will get through what ifs and you'll create a positive unknown the ISTJ and INTJ loop is more than surprising. In fact, what I've found is these types worry most of all about the fact that people are inauthentic and immoral. It's hard for the INTJ and ISTJ to cope with living in, a, in an unfair world. Yeah, it turns out that there are rules in the system around you that is immoral and corrupt. There are people out there that should not be empowered, that are empowered. There are systems in place that should not 
be in place things that are happening in the world that are just morally wrong and you live in this world and you want to make it and you want to succeed but can you really succeed if the world is against you if the odds are stacked against you if the world is corrupt if people and things are unfair and unethical can you really make it well yes at least most of all you should try you should try to focus on what you can do you should be resourceful you should be intelligent you should think about how you can win even if the odds are stacked against you and you shouldn't wait for the world to become better so that you can make it you should go out and try to make it even if the world isn't going to help you and even if things aren't there or ideal or the way you want them to be what I've found with the ENTJ slash ENFJ loop is that they can be obsessed sometimes with material wealth and status. They seem to feel like they need to be surrounded by things and attention. They need to always be able to give examples for how good they are and how amazing their life is. They need to constantly display every little thing that they're doing on social media. They need everyone to know that they're having a good time because how else would people know that they're having a good time and how else would they feel themselves that they're having a good time? What I've found with ENFJs and ENTJs is that they can sometimes become posers. Sometimes they try to impress other people by having a perfect surface lifestyle by constantly displaying your life to the world and showing off your success and amazing talent. But if you really felt amazing, if you really felt talented, would you really need to do these things? What if instead you let yourself disappear from the eyes of the world? If you let yourself go to unknown places, places you've never been before, if you let yourself fade into the unknown and see where you can go in these new places, ENFJs and ENTJs have the capacity to be thought leaders, truly original people with truly unique ideas, if they dare to venture where no person has been before. ENFJs and ENTJs that try too hard to present the perfect life to the world will end up feeling like their life is far from perfect, feeling like they're never good enough, never happy, never content, never satisfied. You'll always want more things, and you'll never feel like it's enough. The ESTJ slash ESFJ loop is really simple. It's a focus on what ifs, fear of missing out, thinking about how the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah, ESTJs and ESFJs, they're constantly comparing themselves to everyone else, but they have this, and I don't have that. But they have that and I don't have this. A lot of time you can get lost in thinking about how the grass is greener on the other side. You can find yourself thinking that you need to do something different all the time. That you constantly have to change your approach. That you, sometimes, that you constantly have to try new things. And you can get lost in this. You can get lost in constantly searching for the right thing to do. Constantly innovating and changing your own approach. Constantly trying new things and never feeling like anything was good enough. No possibility, no opportunity that you chased end up, ended up actually being that nice. So what can you do? What, how can you break out of this? You can practice gratitude. ESTJs and ESFJs that practice gratitude with what they have, that realize the beauty of what is right in front of them, that recognize the potential of what is right here and right now, are going to be happier. Yeah, when ESFJs and ESFJs start noticing the things that they have, and start validating and accepting the things that are right in front of them feel better and they also become protectors because ESTJs and ESFJs have a duty to society to be protectors yeah that's your quest that's your mission to protect the good things in life that we have to maintain and care for and value the good things that we have built in our society and that's where you should start right here right now Why do we loop? We loop because society has been telling us over and over again that we're not good enough. We're constantly bombarded by advertisements telling us about what we're missing out on. We're constantly being told by teachers and parents about what we need to change about ourselves. People need to start validating themselves. People need to start accepting themselves. Recognize that you're beautiful just the way you are. Recognize the value of who you are and what you're capable of build on your strengths while honoring and accepting your weaknesses everyone is human and everyone has flaws but 
if we can live our lives by celebrating our strengths, we can live more happy, more fulfilling lives. Yeah, people that feel broken are never going to succeed. People that obsess about every little thing that's wrong, every single flaw that they're reminded of by other people, everyone worried about every little bit of criticism, these people, they're gonna vanish, they're gonna disappear, unknown, unheard, never able to fulfill their quest. Yeah, no matter what, what tends to happen is the longer you obsess about a loop, the longer you feel stuck in a loop, the harder it is to break. Because what happens is, as long as you are avoiding the challenges of your quest, of your mission, of your purpose, the longer you're avoiding the negative emotions, the stress, the worries, the fears of what it is you need to do, the more real, the more pressing, the more overwhelming this fear becomes. Yeah. What, the things we avoid, they build up in strength. The longer we avoid something, the more fearsome it becomes. And often, what ends up happening is we build up a false idea of how difficult something really is. So what if something is scary? Fear doesn't kill you. So what if something would require you to uh, do something new or to take a risk? Risks don't kill people. Whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that needs to be faced, you can face it. The emotions, the fears, the anger, the anxiety is just anger, it's just fear, it's just anxiety. And that's all it is. It's all just information. It's just there to tell you that there is a stake in what you do. What you do is important and matters. And it is difficult because it matters. And things that are easy, they're boring, they're simple and they're easy, but they're boring. They're simple and honestly, they're easy. So why should you do them? Why should you loop? What value do you get from staying in this loop? What value do you do from keeping trying at something that's never gonna reward you? What value do you get from seeking the approval of people you don't care about? What value do you get of being stuck in the loop? It's time to break the loop. It's time to break the change. <laughs> it is time to make a change. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.